Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, and today we're going to take on a rebuild of the Penn Battle II 4000. This reel was brought to me by a viewer, uh, Dave, happens to live in the great state of New Jersey, and uh, we were nearby, and he asked me if we could just drop this off and have it, uh, have it rebuilt. And apparently what happened here was he got this one used, and uh, it didn't take long to figure out that something wasn't working right. You can see an, a skip, you can feel a skip, and it happens, and he said it's the, the gears. And then as I'm doing this, I'm hearing a, a grind in the bearings as well. So I said, if you're gonna do the gears, you might as well do the bearings. And uh, that's what we agreed to, to have done here. So I'm gonna take this reel apart. I uh, got the parts from mysticparts.com. It's a uh, authorized pen parts distributor. And if you need the pen parts for a particular reel, that's the place to go. We got a couple of bearings. We got the pinion gear, we got the main gear. One of those two is slipping and it doesn't make sense to, uh, to do just the one if you're uh, unsure. Because even if the one might have broken off, the other could have gotten scarred. So let's uh, take this reel apart. We'll find out in a hurry what the wrong pieces are. We'll show you how to service this reel. And we'll get this back to Dave and let him go fishing with a nice smooth operator. So we start by removing the external pieces doesn't matter which order you take them off, I'm going to take off the spool first. I'm going to put them into a parts tray just so that I know where those pieces and parts are uh, for later use. This has got the, uh, uh, the bearing on the spool. That's basically the only difference between that and the newer Pen Fierce and Pen Pursuit 3 lines. Uh, it just has the extra spool gear. Uh, everything else on the Fierce and the Pursuit uh, have been upgraded so that where you used to have the fearsome pursuit with felt drag washers you now have the fearsome pursuit with the HT100 which is exactly what the uh, the battle line has. Now battle only has the, the battle 2 there, there is no battle 3 yet so I'm interested to see what happens when they upgrade that as well. So if you uh, if you want the battle 2 uh, you can buy a fierce uh, which has the graphite framing, or you can buy the Pursuit, which has the metal framing, and essentially you'll get the same reel today in that uh, third generation series as you would with the Battle II, except for that one extra spool bearing there. Uh, okay, we're going to take the bump guard off now. You can't remove the case without getting that bump guard off of there. And then you'll see we have three small uh, screws. They're either Phillips head or <coughs> flat blade. They carry that one uh, slot over so that you could use a flat bladed screwdriver if you like. And while I'm doing this, as a shout out, I've been doing this now, uh, pandemic thing now, almost two months. And uh, this is still a pandemic out there. We still need to be safe and we still need to be thankful for all of the first responders, all of the frontline workers, all of the essential workers that are out there trying to keep us safe while they conquer this horrible disease. And here in the New York, New Jersey area, we've certainly had our share of uh, issues and share of the pandemic. It's getting a little bit better now, but we're still not over it. So please listen to your authorities and listen to all of the folks that are trying to keep us well. And uh, while you're at it, uh, thank anybody who's involved in, uh, in the careers, first responders, police, fire, EMT, folks that work in the hospitals and any healthcare associated uh, places like clinics and long-term care facilities. Um, please just say thank you, take the time. And not just the doctors and the nurses, everybody who goes into one of those buildings is putting their life on the line. So the, the administrators, the uh, support staffs and the like, please say thank you. All right, we're taking this apart. We're trying to figure out what's going on here. We uh, just removed the cross wind block and we were able to pull out the axle shaft. That was probably quick because I was talking, but the axle shaft is connected by this. Uh, picked up something in the tray there. It's connected by the screw that holds it to the cross wind block. And once you remove that, you can remove the axle shaft. And remove this main gear. Let's see what's going on there. Yeah, we've got some. Some worn teeth on the main gear. We got a lot of worn teeth on that main gear. Hopefully it's not in this cross wind gear because that's the one part I didn't buy. And if it is, we'll be back to a delay there. 
So we'll just uh, take a moment to clean this up. I'm checking the teeth on this as I'm wiping it down. And again, just kind of hopeful that it's not not scarred there. And of course, I, I jumped to conclusions because the crosswind gear is driven by the, the gear on the back of the main drive, not the main drive. But we can see a whole bunch of flattened teeth in here. And that's why I say check it from the profile side as well as check it from the face side. And this is the, the area where this gear is worn. So it's the main gear that's gone bad on this one. And uh, that's the ones that uh, we'll go ahead and re replace. I'm just going to put that off to the side just so I don't get that confused. All right, now we're going to go up top on this reel. We're going to remove the, the hold down screw. It'll allow us to take the rotor off. So I just got a, uh, an email from uh, an individual asking me, that, or telling me that the reel was running rough after reassembly. And I mentioned to them that you can always find, uh, you know, to look for the shims on the main gear. In this case, you have bearings, so you don't have the shims. But on a lot of, a lot of reels, you'll have shims there. And that's to adjust the inside-outside play of the gear. And uh, it's, I had mentioned to them that they should uh, go back to the pictures they took. I always advise you to take pictures along the way, whether it's a cell phone camera, a video camera, a still camera, doesn't matter. But take pictures of various stages so you know how these things align and assert themselves. And we got the oops, I forgot to do that kind of uh, thing. So just as a reminder, go ahead and do that. So I've taken off the cap. I like this nut. This nut allows you to hold down the rotor without over tightening it because it's got the shield up top there. I, li I like that particular feature. Okay, we're going to take the rotor off, just check inside. The inside on this one is fine. I did buy a replacement bearing because I did hear uh, some noise in there, but also we're going to replace this pinion gear, so let's take that out. There's three screws that hold a shield on this one. That's the first. I'm going to lay them on the table here. I don't expect that they would be different, but I've been surprised in the past, so this is a good way to to go ahead and uh, just check, making sure. If it does come where one's longer than the other, then that's what you want to note, what hole it came out of, so that when you go to reinstall, uh, you reinstall correctly. Okay, I got three of those. They're right. I'm just going to leave these right on the table here. I'm going to put those screws right in the circle there, because those are going to go right back in. So here's your, your assembly that has your pinion gear, it has a bearing, it has the anti-reverse clutch, and it has the holder for the bigger bearing. So those are the bearings that I got. I'm figuring if what happened was that we wound up getting jammed. Uh, if we wound up with a wobble, then that's what's going to, those are the bearings it's going to affect. And if those are the bearings that it's going to affect, then let's go ahead and replace them. All right, so those are the, the two bearings that I was trying to match up there. All right, notice on the collar, there's a lip on this collar. When you go to reinstall, make sure it's the right way. Because when you push the bearing out here, you'll see the difference. Here's a shim, two shims, three shims. And this bearing needs to come out of this collar. And right now it's being a little stubborn. And that's probably what uh, what's happened here, or one of the reasons why we have a noisemaker. All right, so I'm going to spray that down with some WD-40 penetrating oil just to try and loosen it up a little bit. I'll come back to that. I get this all the time. My uh, when I reinstalled my anti-reverse clutch, it uh, it's not working, or it's only working in reverse. This this is a one-way clutch. So you need to make sure as you do this that uh, you understand what the top is so that when you reinstall you have it on the top. There's a clutch. I'm going to put it so that the top is up. And then there's the sleeve. And so I'm going to put the sleeve there. Sometimes these sleeves have a uh, prongs on the bottom, but if there's no, uh, no telling it, that can go either way, so don't worry about it terribly. 
and then this is the bad bearing. So I'm going to put the bad bearing. I'm going to match it to make sure it's the right size, put it off to the side. Now I'm just going to look at this, and yes, we have scarring on this too. So that's why I was saying if you do the one, you can uh, almost be assured that if one is out of a line, uh, you're going to see the other. Now here you can notice this channel is not an even channel. We've got a wave in this one here. And that's because the broken gear was traveling out of uh, out of round, and, and it was probably scrunching that down. So good, good deal that we went and got both of those pieces. All right, let's just go ahead and uh, I still want to get this out of here. There we go. That uh, WD-40 or penetrating oil is usually the trick. Probably just had a little bit of something there that was uh, hanging it up. Let's just go ahead and push that through. I'm running out of finger here. There we go. We've got that out. And we're remembering that this is the top. This is where I was mentioning before. You have a sleeve. One side is, is fatter than the other. I'm going to take that new bearing and just put that right in there. That's where it belongs. And I went in a whole lot easier than the others came out. And we had those three shims. I'm just going to make sure that those three shims are sitting up top, which is where they were. So that when we go to reinstall, we remember that that's where they belong. So a lot of this is all about memory, right? Uh, so if you have trouble with your memory, like me from time to time, take pictures. It, uh, and it doesn't have to be the video. I'm doing a video, obviously, for YouTube. But uh, just take some snapshots along the way. All right, I'm just going to clean up what, uh, what little is in here in terms of issues. I'm using a cotton swab for that. If you find you got some aggressive greases, just uh, use a little bit of that WD-40 as a degreaser. Uh, I get questions all the time, can I lubricate my reel with it? In a pinch, go ahead, but it's really not a lubricant, uh, even though it says lubricates. Uh, it doesn't have staying power, and you're much better using a fishing reel grease than one of these general purpose greases that are going to evaporate or have some other issues behind you. All right, so this is our case. Okay, so let's go to reinstall then. We've just taken the pinion gear out of the bag. Put some grease on that. And if we had that one of those shims, the copper one belongs below. It's kind of a bearing shield and shim. Here's the new bearing that we're going to put in on that. We've transferred the little um, small bushing, uh, axle bushing, and put it inside the uh, pinion gear. Now we put the sleeve on. And again, if you had any question about this, you could certainly go to the uh, schematics. They're available and they would tell you the, the order and the sequence that this would go through. We have a roller clutch here so you can put a little bit of oil on them using Real X, which is a synthetic fishing reel oil. I right, put that in. Remember there was a downside or bottom side, which actually is the plastic mounting case for the bearing, but the shiny side was up top. And if you put it in upside down, you're not going to have the reverse going one way. You're going to have it going the other, and you're going to wonder what's going on in your reel. Replace the uh, old bearing with the new one in the collar. Just fall out. Now we have a nice tight, tight stack there. Now we can take the entire assembly and we can put that inside. You want to make sure that this sits flush with the uh, the outside. And then we have one of those little shims that goes on the top here. And that's to kind of hold and protect when your, your rotor goes on the assembly. Speaking of that rotor on the assembly then, I'm going to grab the rotor. I'm going to put that on. There's that other one. I knew that we had a second one here. It was on the bottom of the rotor for whatever reason. Set that rotor in there. And then we have that cap that you can over tighten, which is wonderful. Oops. Just looking down. Maybe that's why I should have a, a parts tray here, right? I need that collar going on for the main assembly to hold that down before we put the rotor on. I don't normally leave these things on the table. I normally put them in my parts tray. And I uh, 
left them on the table and there you go I overlooked them normally I'll take a glance up into my porch tray and I'll, uh, I'll see what's next as I'm kind of talking away saying other things like thank you to the first responders and so on and subconsciously I'm looking over there I wasn't looking on my, my workbench okay. so that's one there's two So they just opened up the, uh, the charter industry for fishing here in the Northeast. That's a, a good sign. It's severely limited in terms of uh, number of anglers that can go out and uh, spacing and social distancing and all those other sorts of things. But uh, at least they're back in the water and um, I think we're all looking forward to grabbing our rods and getting down and doing some, some fishing, certainly to break the uh, cycle of the past few months now. I was going to say weeks, it's months. Okay, we're going to just tighten this up then. This is the, the nut you can't over tighten because it's got the collar on it. It's an 11 millimeter nut for those of you that are playing at home. Or tight. Let's give it a spin. Oh, look at that. And no grind in that one now. Of course, we don't have the main gear in there yet, but what a difference. So speaking of that main gear, let's go down and work the bottom of the assembly then. I'm going to start by putting in the, the crosswind gear. I'll put a little bit on the back, you don't need much. And a little bit on the front because the crosswind block is going to run on that. And then when you do this, make sure the stud is low because you're going to have to attach the crosswind block uh, after you put the main gear in. And this is this reel is notorious. It does not have an override switch for the uh, the reel. So what'll happen is if you get uh, stuck with a crosswind block up here that's not been attached, you're going to have a heck of a time trying to get that thing out without uh, breaking something. And maybe that's what happened with this one. Uh, and you can never be quite certain, but maybe that's what happened with this one in terms of how those teeth got banged up there. All right. The inside of the crosswind block is getting cleaned. Again, just like the other side, we're going to put some inside the channel. We're going to put some on the, the piece where it's going to ride. And then insert that over the stud, keeping it low. And grab that new gear now. Nice, bright, shiny new gear. So, Dave, I think you'll be happy with the results of this. I still think you're you're probably better than you were in terms of what the uh, uh, money that you've put out versus uh, the value of the reel at this point. Just wipe down this axle. We'll see, but it's all in performance. These reels will last a long time if you keep them uh, tuned up and don't abuse them. Probably is a general statement about any reel, right? But. Uh, I should turn this one to the camera. So what I just did was I inserted our axle shaft through the pinion gear. I've aligned the screw hole in the crosswind block. That's a D-shaped block, so it can only go in one way. And now I'm looking at my parts tray as you're looking at my arm for that little flat head screw. So that we can attach the the two. Okay, then we had these are the two bad bearings. This is the bearing that goes on the side plate. You can give it a spin right now and make sure that it's operating. And it's doing a nice job and it's nice and quiet and clean. So we just simply have to reinstall the side plate. Button this reel up. We'll go up top, just take a look at the drag washers while we have this reel open and in for service. But again, the problem was in that main gear. So the main gear, I think, was about $10 maybe. The pinion gear, probably about the same. The bearings, probably about the same. So I think the parts on this reel were between $30 and $40. The reel, uh, it is still a current reel, the Battle 2 is still being sold, and I think this one's probably signed for $90. So even if you, uh, if you paid something uh, 
twenty thirty dollars you still got a reel here that's going to last a long time this current technology and uh, is okay now I just made a mistake so see I get ahead of myself with this darn talking I didn't put the tie down for the um, cap screw on the rotor so let's just back that up for a moment I can continue to talk so a lot of folks try to make an estimate in terms of what the should I should I repair the reel or not? And, and there's two two ways to look at that. One of them is if the reel has sentimental value. If it has sentimental value, then it's probably worth repairing, just to bring it back from a memory standpoint. Uh, if it's a uh, I'm at a flea market and I'm trying to make an assessment as to whether I should buy a used reel, uh, and I don't know, then. Uh, that's where you want to do the, the economic analysis. Can I buy the reel and repair it for a reasonable rate or uh, not? And uh, most of the time, I like to say it's about a 50%. If the cost of the reel repair is going to be greater than 50% of a new reel, then it's probably not worth repairing. Factor in the usage on it and everything else. and. Uh, most of the time, it's not going to uh, not going to prove a value, but uh, sort of like a used car, I guess. If you're trying to decide new versus used, and you look at all the mileage on it and what the asking price is, and you know it's going to need repairs, you have to make that judgment with reels too. Okay, so we've just taken care of that issue. We've come and done the. I'm looking for my little screw. I think it just fell in. Okay, we'll take that out again and we'll do this over. I believe that the little screw just fell behind the cross wire block. Oh, there it is. Got it. So we're going to do that again. We're going to put the axle shaft in. We're going to align the axle shaft. That's generally why I leave pieces in the parts tray until needed. As I don't run into those problems, we'll get that small screw back in. Now we can put the case on. Put those three side plate case screws in. Should be one more in there. There is. Also, these little washers that goes on screws. Make sure that you have that if you took them off. So Dave, you're going to have a completely rebuilt, good as new reel here. The only difference between this and a new one at this point with the parts that you've put into this is the paint uh, blemishes, scrapes and scars, and quote unquote patina. And that's okay. I, uh, when I go out fishing, I fish some of the ugliest reels that are around. That's just because I've taken the time to keep them clean and keep them right internally. And I like to, to think that the, the scars and like uh, each have a story to tell behind them uh, even if it wasn't uh, my reel originally and somebody else put the, the ding in it uh, I'd rather uh, make sure that it works mechanically perfect and not worry too much about what the reel looks like uh, of course there's other folks that want to repaint recondition restore that's okay too I'm not saying don't do that I'm just saying that that's something I don't do try and keep them clean. I hose them off after every trip. I make sure that they are greased and lubed and serviced on a regular basis. But I don't uh, I don't repaint, I don't restore, I don't uh, treat them cosmetically beyond what normally would be wear and tear. Alright, this is the last piece. This is the screw that holds the bump guard in. And then we're just going to go up top here, take a quick look at those uh, HD100 drags, make sure that they're okay. Look at that. Oh my gosh. You won't recognize this reel. Very nice. All right, let's grab that spool then. Yeah. 
The HT100 system is up top. It's actually got diamond shaped uh, drag washers in it. I'm looking for the piece of the, the drag washer hold down clip with the opening in it. That'll enable me to remove the others. These are dry, so I'm going to just use some Cal's Universal Dry Grease on these. Just going to dip it in the dry, dry grease, wipe it around so that it all gets kind of a coating of it, and then wipe off the excess. Speaking of wiping off, I'm going into the channel here. Just use my Q-tip. There's a little bit of grease and the like in there. There's nothing terribly bad with it, but you want to make sure it's clean because debris will affect dry washer performance. I'm going to put the first one in. Okay, so there's there's two uh, two sets here. We have the uh, metal goes in next. Second of the the drag washers. Do the same thing. Rub it in. Wipe off the excess. Now most of the time you look for a keyed washer, that's kind of what I was looking for, but the drags are actually acting as the key with those insets into the slots there. And then we're going to just put that retainer clip back in. And this is a spring, so be careful with this one. Make sure that it's in your channels. That's that is. Put that back on. And we can just button this one up and we're done. So that is the rebuild of a Pen Battle 2 4000 and all its pieces and parts, how to replace the main gear, how to replace the, the pinion gear, how to service the clutch and uh, the dry washers and how to get ready to go fishing again. There you go. Pen Battle 2. Alright, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, uh, please like it. And uh, if you want to see more of these, please subscribe. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Thank you for watching.